Good afternoon, everyone. It's amazing to be here. My name is Martin Howard from Hayes Parsons Insurance Brokers. I am conscious that I am here as a gap between you and your lunch. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes the elephant in the room is to mention that we could hear the food being served and we're thinking about very important matters. But cue the line for the insurance at the end of the last video clip. So I'm going to be super focused because we're going to really delve very briefly into this fire and flood uh, theme with the insurance hat on. And by the way, I'm here with a great team, with um, Alex, our marketing administrator, and Sean, who deals with many of our commercial clients. So do come and speak to us. It's worth saying that we've got a hamper of two local gins, one from Liverpool and one from the Wirral, and some posh chocolates, some glasses, and if you put your business card in or you haven't got one, you just need to fill out a form. We want to speak to you, obviously, about insurance, of course, but the hamper is there as an incentive as well to come and have a conversation. So it's been really interesting to hear both Mike and Nick's stories of how they managed through a time of crisis. And it's good to think how we might prepare our museums, our centres, for the unexpected as much as one ever can. So let's have a look at a few hints and tips that have helped our own museum clients over the years. And the first thing is it's so obvious it can sound insulting, but it's actually to have a business continuity plan. We might call it a disaster recovery, an emergency plan, it doesn't matter what it's called, it's actually have you got one and what's in it and how would you know if it had been helpful. Well, let's think about that just for a moment. So, for instance, being prepared, making this plan will look like your management team taking time to discern, agree and write down all the different eventualities that could potentially arise. But I do take the point that none of us could have seen the curveball of COVID coming down the track. So whether it's fire or flood or a loss of power or a cyber attack or a local incident preventing access to your site or your museum or maybe a terrible accident on site, God forbid, but these things do happen. Have you actually thought through how these things will impact your procedures and the people that you'll call upon in such circumstances, your own staff and volunteers, other organisations. Taking it further, are there any things that you can actually manage or limit by putting that planning in? You might not be able to do everything. Some things in life are not insurable, they're not preventable, but some things are, and it may be a case of working those things out. Who would you communicate with as well in a time of crisis? Your own staff and volunteers, the public, the emergency services? A tough question is to think then about the financial and people consequences of such disasters. If there are financial risks, what happens really if you can't trade? Now we're not talking about COVID here or just flooding or fire, but think of a wider picture of a disaster that may happen. What happens to your income streams? Have you got any reserves? Are there any things that you can do about that? Have you got liabilities to other third parties that you need to consider? And yes, your insurance policy needs to be up to scratch. But what about people? Do any of the risks posed bring potential additional stresses or anxieties. I'm sure from the um, stories we've heard today, there would have been huge additional stress and anxiety and pressure. But think about the other possible things that could go wrong in a disaster recovery program, a business continuity project and plan, because that will help you think of your people and what you can do to help provide support for their well-being. I'm sure you are doing a brilliant job of this already. The danger is that it can come across as you've got to do X, Y, and Z, but it's really flagging things up before, hopefully, any disaster ever happens. Just as an aside on that, you might think, well, this is all good and well. I don't really know how to get my museum or my organisation to start 
or really do a proper job of this project. And that's when you might be wise to use an actual specialist to actually pay a fee to an organization to help you create, design, and run your business continuity plan. If you haven't got a clue how to do that, we certainly can signpost you to organizations that will help you with that. We don't earn a penny from them, but there are other professionals who can help you create a robust plan. Uh, the other thing that's worth just saying in relation to this is some of the uh, interruption costs for business interruption. Let's think about the cost of that loss of income. Have you ever properly assessed it? I'll give you an example. In a previous insurance brokerage, I actually was helping a client uh, who was a museum. They transferred their policy to us where I was working before. They'd gone through a hideous claim for a flood and they only got a third of the business interruption loss of income cover because they accidentally, their broker, not put the right amount. So as you can imagine, they were keen to switch brokers and have a thorough review of their business interruption. So don't be in that situation. And likewise, your actual buildings, if you own your buildings, and especially if they're listed, we all know how the rebuild costs are rocketing don't end up being underinsured. It's hideous paying for those additional fees, I know, to have the rebuild costs done and maybe additional insurances, but I tell you what, it's a lot worse if you suffer a fire claim and you're proportionally have the amount reduced because you're underinsured. So again, speak to us if you need signposting to Chartered Surveyors who will help with that. Let's come into land a little bit on this now. Think about, you've done your disaster recovery, your business continuity plan, you're thinking about your insurances, but do the two ever come together? And I don't often know if they do for museums, but make sure when you've got your plan that you then adjust your insurances in line with your plan and keep that plan live so that it's always been dusted off and reviewed each year and link it in with your insurance broker. We'd be happy to do that for you and we'd love to have a conversation with you uh, during this two-day conference. Finally, let's just think of a couple of extra things and these are things you can't prepare for and they've been beautifully demonstrated by the stories we've heard from the museums affected by crisis. And that is that sometimes, out of bad things, come good things. And I knew another museum client in the Midlands of mine from years ago who went through a, a major fire again, and they had to refocus their vision. It was an opportunity to go, what are we actually doing? What are we about? Let's go back to our founding principles of why we were created as a museum, and it actually sharpened up what they wanted to then recreate. They came to a, a bit of a deal with the insurer as to what was rebuilt, and it actually was a much more helpful way of getting a good result out of a dreadful, dreadful situation. So do talk to us um, at, during the conference. Think about that business continuity plan. Think about how it affects your business interruption um, insurance and the rebuild value of your property. If you have suffered already a major incident, similar to the ones we've heard, or others, let's share those stories through AIM and in a wider circle, because we all learn by doing that. And finally, thank you for listening. Do get in touch with us. You can contact us directly, or you can email us, or visit the website. And don't forget the gin hamper. Thank you very much.